every glory. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is what? Good. He's not just good some of the time, but he's good. Give the Lord a praise if you believe the Lord is good on this morning. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for this morning, for we recognize that it's not in man to direct his own steps. We recognize that if it had been up to us, we'd have been gone a long time ago. But oh, for grace and oh, for mercy that God has kept us here a little while longer that we may serve him while we ain't got time. It's so good to see all of you that have come out on this morning. Um, thank God for all of you that are visiting with us. We uh, want to thank all of those that participated in the devotional part of our service. I tell you, it's nothing like being able to come together with your brothers and sisters, lifting up your voice unto God. Amen. It might not sound good to nobody else, but guess what? It's coming up before him as a, a sweet smelling aroma. God, God, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. It's so good. And we thank all of you that are watching us this morning. We pray God's blessings upon you and thank you for being with us this morning. Um, and as of today, I've known y'all for three years. Amen. Praise God. Amen. My first time meeting y'all was three years ago on today. Amen. And who would have thunk I'd be here with y'all today. Amen. Praise God. He's so good. He's so good. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? Amen. You come to the right place. Let us be going to the book of Revelations, uh, chapter number three, and we'll read verses seven and eight for our consideration on this morning. I um, want to again, um, let everyone know about our young adults class that we have going on. I want to invite, if you're between the ages of 18 and 35, we want to see you. Amen. 18 and 35, that's the shut off. But if you're between that, we want you to come and um, join with us having an awesome time. Revelation chapter three, verses seven and eight. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me, and I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I said, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted I'm singing glory, hallelujah, and Jesus lifted me. I said, sit on hand me by, but Jesus lifted me. I said, sit on hand me by, but Jesus lifted me. I said, sit on hand me by, but Jesus lifted me. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, and Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted me. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus lifted. I'm singing glory, hallelujah, and Jesus. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, and the Bible says, To the angel in the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. Somebody say an open door. Open door. And no one can shut it. For you have little strength and have kept my word and have not denied me. He says, he who opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would pray with me. Father God in heaven, it is indeed we are grateful, dear Lord, this morning for this time, for this opportunity that you have blessed us with. 
Father, I pray for all of those under the sound of my voice. Somebody needs you for one thing and somebody needs you for another. Father, I pray that you would be God in all of our situations. Father, may some relationship be formed between some wavering soul and you on today, Father, is our prayer. And if you grant us these petitions, Father, we'll be so ever mindful to give you the glory and the praise. It is in the name of Jesus we pray that all those that love God say amen. 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 I want to give um, for a message, for a thought on this morning. God has the key to the door. Yeah. Right. Amen. Look at somebody this morning and say, God got the key, got the key. to the door. The Lord has the key to the door. The thing about transition, when you're in transition, is that we find ourselves in what we call an awkward place. We're wanting God to open doors and shut doors in another episode of our life. There's something about being in transition that's important when it comes to doors being open and doors being closed. When you're in between one place and you're trying to get to another place, there's this thing you're going to have to go through called a door. How you get from one place to another is through a door. A room has a way to access it and that thing is called a what? A door. You can't get from where you are to where you want to be unless you go through a door. A door separates one room from another, which means something. It's significant because it means that your movement doesn't have to be far for you to make the transition. Sometimes we think that when you've got to make a transition that it's going to be a long journey. But the truth is God can set a door in your life and you can transition out of one place, walk through that door into another place. And it doesn't have to take a lot of movement to make it happen because if you're standing at the door and you're in this room, all you have to do is go through that door into another room. Your movement was only one step and you're in a whole nother room. Sometimes we think it takes big movement to make transition. You can be in a room of brokenness one minute and step into wholeness in another minute. All it takes is a door. You can be in a place of sorrow and grief in one moment and God can make the transition where you walk through a door to a place of joy, to a place of peace, to a place of comfort. All it takes is one step and you access it and everything in your room, in your life changes. Doors in the Bible are very important. Open doors give you access to something. And shut doors mean that you have no access to something. So there is a positive and there are also negatives that go along with your door. A door means, a, a door means you're shut. If it's shut, then you don't have any access. If it's open, then you have access. And I want to let you know that the Lord got the key to your door on this morning. He opens doors that no man is able to shut. I don't hear nobody. He shuts doors that no man is able to open. And if you trust him, he's going to let you have access or deny the access to stop you from missing what he has for you. Now, a shut door means several things. Number one. It means protection. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. When you go home after service, you don't just leave your door wide open, do you? Any of y'all just left your door wide open when you left the house? You shut the door because you don't just want anybody and everybody coming into your house when you're not there or when you're at home sleeping. A shut door means protection. And sometimes God shuts the door to protect you. You know, the children of Israel, when they came out of Egyptian bondage and crossed the Red Sea, and God said to Moses, turn around and look. And suddenly, Pharaoh and his army, they had went out there into the Red Sea that was parted and standing up on both sides. And the Bible said that the water caved in and they vanished. It was symbolic of God doing what? Closing the door. Saying to Moses, these Egyptians that you have seen today, you will see them again no more forever. In other words, what he was saying, I am God. I opened doors and when I parted the ocean, I opened it and no man can shut it unless I get ready to shut it. 
Now, sometimes we shut a door for privacy. Sometimes, you know, people come over to your house unexpectedly and you say to your kids, go in there and get that stuff out the living room. Go in, go in there and pick up everything. Take that stuff, get that stuff out that room and take it back there in the back. Put that up. Get this and hide this. Put it back there. And you know what you do when you do that. Don't tell the story. What do you do when you put it in there? You shut the door. Why? Because not everybody needs to have access to private matters in your house. You stay in that area and look around, but the shut door means that this is private. What I'm trying to say to you is don't, you don't need to see the mess. I only want you to see the clean part. And let me tell you, church, God knows how to shut the door and deal with your, the mess in your life and not let everybody see what you got going on. I don't hear anybody glad that we serve a God that would not cause us to come to an open shame. But if God needs to deal with your heart, if God needs to deal with your life, God knows how to get you by you yourself away from everything else to get in you and deal with what he needs to deal with. So he closes doors for protection and for privacy and he opens doors to give you access to something or to someone. Almost all sin can be traced back to an open door. All sin can be traced back to an open door that you open to someone or something that moved into your life because you opened that door. You know, church, in life, there was something that we call doorkeepers. And it's frustrating because doorkeepers can let you in or they can either keep you out. Doorkeepers can shut you out. And politics or, or whatever you want to call it, and an office, whatever it is, they can limit you. They can stop you from having access. And someone who controls the access says to you know that they can shut you out and you feel like you don't belong there. People may try to block your progress. People may try to stop you. But we serve a God that opens doors that no man is able to shut. The Lord is my doorkeeper. Say it with me. The Lord is my doorkeeper doorkeeper and he opens doors that no man is able to shut. Nobody can keep me from having access. Let me tell you, I got news for you this morning. You may not like me, but you can't stop what God has planned for me. What God has for me, it is for me. And you, not you, nobody can stop what God has planned in my life. I'm the only one that can get in the way of what God got planned for me. So the Lord is a doorkeeper and door, the Lord opens doors that no man is able to shut. And any door the Lord shuts, no man can open that door. Man is not in charge of my door. I don't know about you all. Man is not in charge of my door. The devil is not in charge of my door. The Lord is my doorkeeper. The Lord got the key to my house. There are some doors that need to be shut. And the only one that can shut them for you is the Lord God Almighty. Yes. Amen. There are some doors that need to be opened for you. Some places you're supposed to be. Some things you're supposed to do. You need access to do those things. And I'm here this morning proclaiming to you that the Lord got the key to your door this morning. He said, behold, I set before you an open door and no man can shut it. Not only is he our doorkeeper, that means something else. It doesn't just mean he opens and shut doors, but it also means, according to the book of Exodus, that when they were commanded to take blood and put it on the door of their home, and when the destroyer came, the Bible says, when I see the blood, I pass over your door. Now, the destroyer may be assigned to the home to destroy it, and somebody may be fearful of what the destroyer is trying to do in your marriage, in your family, in your life. But I'm here to tell you on this morning, do not let fear torment you. Don't let the enemy tell you something is going to happen. We serve a God that can do all things but fail. And if you would have God in your life, have the blood over your door, then when the destroyer comes, he can't get in. All he can do is pass on, pass on over your door. I'm 
speaking this morning today to somebody who's been a little tormented with fear. And you don't have to allow destruction to access your life, church. Come on, you ought to give God praise because we serve a God. You remember when Satan was getting ready to test Job? That when he was getting ready to come to him, y'all know he couldn't just walk up on Job like some dude up on the street and just do what he wanted to do to him. What did he have to do before he went to Job? He had to first of all go to God to get permission to even be able to test Job. And I came to tell somebody this morning that may be going through things and feel like it's too big for you that you can't handle it that before it ever got to you it already went through the hands of God. Before you ever arrived at it, it had already been through the fingers of God. God had filtered that thing. God had looked it over and made sure that when it got to you that you would be able to bear it that you would be able to handle it thanks be unto God who causes us to triumph. He said, I will stand over the door because the Lord is a doorkeeper. He says, I stand over the door and I watch the door of your household. If the enemy wants to access, put the blood on the doorpost and the Lord will be your doorkeeper. Yes, sir. Now, this is really important. Maybe you never thought about this, but Isaiah 6 gives a great insight into doors. Isaiah 6 is when the, you know, Uzziah died. And it says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the Bible says that his train filled the temple. And glory to God came out of this temple. And then it makes this strange statement. statement it said, and the doorpost moved at the sound of his voice. The doorpost began to move. Since the Lord is a doorkeeper and he has the key to the door, sometimes he moves the door. And when he speaks, the door ain't got no choice but to move. There are some people God does not want to have access to you and yours anymore. And he can come up with a word and he can speak a word. And at the sound of his voice, the doorpost ain't got no choice but to move. It was here. They did have access, but God moved the door and now they don't have access. Every open door to someone matters. Every door that you open to allow someone to come into your life to have access to you, it matters. Every door that you open to allow something to come into your life and attach to you, that kind of stuff matters. Because when you are being pulled this way and pulled that way and pulled this way and pulled that way, you got all of this energy being depleted after you. And then when it comes time for you to go through something, you ain't got nothing for yourself. You ain't got nothing left over because you're being pulled in all of these different directions. So every so often, God has to speak a word to our spirit. And when he does, God speaks the word and the door moves. And the next time any of y'all ever been in a situation, you're just like, man, I don't know how this thing is going to get fixed. I don't know how this thing is going to get done. And you and your natural mind just trying to figure stuff out, trying to plan stuff out, trying to work stuff out, going over here trying to get help, going over here trying to get help. But then you find yourself on your knees before an all-powerful God, before a just God, and you let God know about what you're dealing with. You ask God to give you help. You ask God to assist since you and what you have going on and now you looking back at that thing didn't nobody do it but the Lord didn't nobody bring me out but the Lord didn't nobody keep me but the Lord didn't nobody sustain me but the Lord I couldn't keep myself it was nobody but the Lord so he says that he opens doors that no man is able to shut and he shuts doors that no man is able to open. I'm so glad that when I wanted to go through the door, God kept it locked. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad 
that when I thought I knew what was best and I tried to make decisions based off of what I wanted and what my flesh desired, that God decided to keep a lock on the door. Let me tell you, church, sometimes it's not that God is being mean. It's not that God is being insensitive by keeping things away from you. God knows that you are not ready for what's behind that door. God knows that you are not equipped for what's behind that door. I want what's behind door number one. I want what's behind door number two. I want what's behind door number three. But God knows that you are not able to handle what's behind that door. Thank God for saying no. Thank God for keeping from me those things that I desire, but I didn't know that I was not able to handle it. You know, y'all ever got your, you fought tooth and nail to get into something, and then you get into it and you find yourself not knowing what you're doing, know how you got there, don't know what you're dealing with. Wait, before you make a decision, you got to say, Lord, what do you think about this thing? Lord, what do you have to say about it? Lord, show me your will. Show me your plan for my life. Because he says in his words, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, plans to give you a good hope and a future. And it is what I like about it, to give you an expected end. Oh, I may be going through it right now, but thank God that I have an expected end. That the Lord has set up for me. Man, it may look like I'm being run through the ringer right now. But the good news is that God already has prepared for me an expected end. In church, if some people have access to you, they will make you not go into doors that God opens for you. You know you ain't ready for that. That, that ain't for you. Why? How you know what's for me? You don't know what's for you. But people, people when they see you doing stuff that they never had the opportunity to do. They see you striving to get involved in stuff that they never were involved in. And some fell back in the crevices of their mind. Somehow you go outshine them. You go outdo them. At the end of the day, man, we all trying to work out our own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. I got to work for myself. I got to work out my own soul salvation to save myself from this untoward generation and I got too much on me to let you talk me out of what God has planned for my life. If you want to sit here and be worried about the mediocre things, you sit over here and worry about that, but I got to keep my eyes set on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. People like that church, don't let nobody rob you of your faith. Don't let nobody rob you of your faith. Just because other people are discouraged, don't let them make you become discouraged. Just because other people feel like they're at their wit's end, don't make them feel like you're at their wit's end. And even as a child of God, when you meet people in that place, it's your job not to leave them like you found them. It's your job to reach out and to pick somebody up. It's your job to reach out and to encourage somebody that's going through. Oh, how we so soon forget that you were lost, you were down, you were at your wit's end, you were between a rock and a hard place, and somebody had to come out and reach out and bring you to where you are. Now reach out and do the same thing for somebody else. Lord, he opens doors that no man is there. Somebody just said it, the Lord is a doorkeeper. And God knows when it's time to close the door. You know us, we like to drag stuff out. We like to hold on to stuff. But I'm so glad that we serve a God. And even when you're doing all of what you can, hold on to it. We serve a God that at the blink of an eye can take that thing away from us. That's why we ought not put so much faith and so much stock in our possessions. 
and the things that we've attained in this life and the things that we have. Because when I tell you at the drop of a dime, God can make all of that stuff leap. Don't you ever get so high-minded and high on the horse that you start walking around bragging and boasting about what you got, bragging and boasting about what you got. Because we serve a God the same way he took you up. Our God is able to bring you right back down. Humble yourself and under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, he'll exalt you. But we want to exalt ourselves. But he says, be humble. And in due time, I'll do the exaltation. I'll bring you up. I'll do it for you. If you give me time. The Lord is able to open doors and to close doors. And you know the thing about it, every closed door is not a bad thing, church. Just because you didn't get your way is not the end of the world. Just because your prayer didn't get answered the way you wanted it to get answered does not mean that it's the end of the road. It just means that God has another plan for your life. Lord, I know what my plans are. Lord, I know what my desires are. But at the end of the day, Lord, if they don't line up with what you want for me, Lord, throw it out the window. Lord, give me a new plan. Lord, give me a new strength. He said, I know the plan that I, he told the prophet Isaiah. And the Jeremiah, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the next. God got a plan for your life. But the devil also has a plan for your life. And you got to get to the place to where you can tell the difference between the devil's plan and God's plan. Because some of us think we living for God and we actually living for the devil. The Lord is able to open doors, church. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I've had several instances in my life, whether it was a job or whatever it was, and I know that I wasn't, what they say, near about qualified <laughs> to get what it was that I got. But the Lord just opened the door. The Lord just provided a way for me. Any of y'all ever been in a city where, man, I don't know how I'm going to get this thing done. I'm just making it up a wing and a prayer. And then when it comes time for that thing to happen, God just come in and he opens a door. Because our God is a provider. The Bible says, I never see the righteous forsaken, nor see begging for bread. If you are God's child, and if you are living for him, if you are striving, to make heaven your home, God gonna make sure you got what you need. He's gonna make sure you have what you need. So, church, I want to encourage you this morning. And I want to just ask, is the blood in your house? Is your door covered in the blood? Can I tell you something? The devil trying to take over your house. Yeah, yeah, he's trying to take over your house. Not only he's trying to take over, he's trying to take down your family. Yes, sir. He wants to ruin the relationships within your family. That's why you got to make sure that God is the head of your life. That's why you got to make sure that the blood takes up residence in your house. That you are covering your house in prayer. That you are covering your family in prayer. My children may be acting a fool right now, but they are going to be saved. They are going to live for God. They are going to do the will of God. We may be going through a period of disarray right now, but after a while, God is going to bring those things to pass. Devil, I don't know when you got here. I don't know where you came from, but you got to go. Somebody say, devil, you got to get up out of here. You've been evicted. You've been put on notice. You got to get away from here. This is God's house. God lives up in here. Church, choose you today who you going to serve. Are you going to be on the Lord's side? Or are you going to be on the side of the enemy? We ought to have the blood over our door. So when trouble comes, we're ready. So when the enemy, as the Bible says, comes in like a flood. 
the Bible says that the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Oh man, oh, it's good to tell somebody you fighting a fixed fight. It's good to know. It's good to know, man, that before I ever engage in it, before I ever go through it, I know I'm going to experience some moments where my faith is going to get weary. I'm going to become a little doubtful. I'm going to become a little hesitant every now and then. But it's good to know that after the end of this thing, what we said last week, Victor. I'm going to win. God got the key to the door. God got the key to your door on this morning. I don't care how hard your heart may be. How hard your heart has become. God got the key to it. Can I tell you something? I don't care how hard or mean an individual may be. God knows exactly what to send that person's way. In order to get that person to change their ways. In order to get there, the Bible says that he holds the king's heart in his hand and he turns it whatever way he chooses. God is in control of you. And even though you may have been hurt by life, you've been hurt by folk in the church, you've been hurt by people in your family, and you want to walk around and be mad at God, walk around and don't want to serve God because of the things that you have experienced in this life. God know how to send enough trouble your way. God know how to send enough tribulation your way. God knows how to send enough trouble all your way in order to get you to drop down to your knee and say for God I live and for God I'm willing to die I'm not going to let what I'm going through define where I'm going to end up but I'm going to live my life every day in service of the Lord trying to be faithful unto him working while it is yet day for I know a day is coming where I won't be able to do no work God has the key to the door he has the key. He says in Hebrews 10 35, he said, therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has the great reward. Tell somebody, hold on. You ought to just keep on holding on this morning. Let's not give up. Let's not throw in the towel. We got to hold on to our hope, y'all. We got to hold on to our confidence. What is our confidence? That the same Jesus that they crucified, that he's one day coming again to judge the world. Yeah, he's coming back. He's coming again to judge the world, to receive his own. And if I want to be found faithful in his eyesight, I got to live a life that is pleasing unto him. God opens doors that no man is able to open. He shuts doors that no man is able to shut. I know, I know the last time you saw me, I may have been involved in this and entangled in that and involved in this, but you ain't seen me since God shut the door. I'm in a different place now. You, you, you ain't seen me since God changed things around now. All you know is the old me. You're going through the wrong door. You're looking in the wrong place. You gotta look at me where I am right now. Anybody here glad this morning that he whom the Son has set free is free in Indeed, that you ain't no longer got to be bound by the things of this life, but God has set you free. You remember me when I was behind that door, when I was over here. But thanks be unto God, he has brought me to a different place in life. He's done a new thing in my life. God is able to do a new thing in your life. Let me tell you, we serve a God that is in the business of cleaning people up. Let me tell you, let me tell you, the church, I read it somewhere like this, the church is not a museum for saints, but whether it is a hospital for the sinners. Let me tell you, this is the place God wants to do a work in your life. The doctor wants to see somebody this morning. God, God wants to do some surgery on somebody on this morning. Somebody got a lying spirit. The Lord want to operate on you this morning. Somebody holding on to guilt this morning. The Lord wants to operate on you this morning. Somebody holding on to anger. You got malice in your heart. God wants to perform surgery on you this morning. Let God take anything in you that's not like him away. So that he can take up residence in your life. He can do a work on you. He can change your life for the better. He can do it if you would simply surrender to him. Give him the opportunity 
Now here's the thing about the door. Somebody come and they knocking on your door and they want to come in. You got a choice. Either I'm gonna open the door or I'm not gonna open the door. Yes, sir. If it's your witness, I peek through so they can see me. <laughs> <laughs> so they can know I'm at the house. Nah, they ain't gonna open the door. We have the opportunity, we have the choice to make whether or not we're gonna open that door or whether or not we're gonna shut it. Yeah. It's the same way with Jesus, the same way with salvation. Amen. God ain't forcing himself into your door. No. God is not forcing himself into your life. Amen. But he says, the day that you hear his voice, right. hard not your heart. Yes, God is knocking even at your door on this morning. You know where you are. You know how your relationship with God is. You know, don't nobody know that better than you and God. You know whether or not you need to open the door. You know whether or not you need to let him come in and change some things in your life. Some of us this morning struggling, trying to handle life by ourselves. Let God come in and take over. Let God come in and take full control of your life. God is more than able to help you, church, to aid you with what you are dealing with. You ain't got to go through life by yourself, fighting by yourself, struggling by yourself. We serve a God that is standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking on this one. Let me come in. Let me make a difference. Let me save your soul. Let me make you whole. I'll do it if you'll give me the opportunity to do it for you. So maybe even you came here this morning and the Lord ain't even never been in your house. Maybe you here this morning. And you never, first of all, let the Lord even come in your door. This is a great opportunity to let him come in. Amen. This is a great opportunity to let the Lord take up residence in your life. Because I came to tell y'all something. That we are all just strangers and pilgrims. Passing through. Ain't none of y'all, ain't none of us going to be here forever. All of us are simply passing through Barren Lane. And one of these days, we are all going to have to stand before just God, giving account of the things that we've done in this life, those things good and those things bad. And it will be up to our Lord and Savior on that day to let us know either well done or depart from me, you work of iniquity. But the decision that you make starting today is going to determine where you end up, church. It's going to determine that. The Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but he's willing that all should come to repentance. God don't want you to be lost in the pardon of your sin. God doesn't want you to be like a ship without a sail, just tossed and drift, don't know where you're going, don't know where you're going to end up. God wants to save you. God wants you to be a part of his body. God wants you to be saved. He wants you to live faithful so that one day you can come and live with him forever. So my brother, my sister, maybe you're here this morning and the Lord needs to come into your door. He needs to come into your house. Let me tell you, you need to give him that chance on this morning. You first of all need to hear his word. What is that? The gospel that he lived, that he died. And on the third day, he rose again with all power in his hand, according to the scripture. He had believed his word. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall all likewise perish. After belief, repent of your sins. After repentance, confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Be willing to put Christ on in baptism. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to rise before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord adds to the church daily, such as should be saved. My brother, my sister, maybe you're here on this morning. You're already a child of God. You're a Christian. But you just got some of everything going on. You're dealing with troubles on your job. You got trouble in your house and your relationship. Just open the door. Yeah. 
Give God an opportunity to come in and correct those things that are wrong in your life. And if you give him that opportunity, I promise you, you won't regret it. For God will do everything in your life but fail if you'll give him the opportunity. So my brother, my sister, this morning, if you are subject to the invitation, I beg and I plead with you, come this morning to Jesus. As together we stand and sing the song of invitation. I surrender all to you.